Welcome back. Act 2 sees the action transported to the island of Barataria, where for the past three months Marco and Giuseppe have been ruling jointly. With their former gondolier friends as courtiers, they have remodelled the court on republican lines. Giuseppe tells us in a song how they spend their time. delay on the duties of the day. First we polish off some batches of political dispatches and foreign politicians circumvent. Then if business isn't heavy we may hold a royal levy or ratify some acts of parliament. And then we probably review the house of troops with the usual shall our hopes and shall our hopes or receive a ceremonial and state and the interesting eastern potentate after that we generally go and dress our private fanny it's a rather nervous duty he's a touchy little man write some letters literary for our private secretary he is shaky in his spelling so we help him if we can then in view of cravings in we go down and order dinner then we polish the regalia and the coronation plate spend an hour intitivating all our gentlemen and waiting or we run on little errands for the ministers of state oh. Philosophers may sing of the troubles of a king, but the duties are delightful and the privilege is great. But the privilege and pleasure that we treasure beyond measure is to run on little errands for the ministers of state. In fact, the only thing spoiling this idyllic existence would seem to be a lack of female company. A cue for Marco to sing one of the score's most admired numbers, Take a Pair of Sparkling Eyes. The gentle rhythm and the wonderfully scored accompaniment give no hint that it was apparently composed at five o'clock in the morning after Sullivan had walked non-stop since 5pm the previous evening. Here's a reminder. Take a pair of sparkling eyes, hidden ever and anon. Merciful eclipse. Do not heed their mild surprise, having passed the Rubicon. Take a pair of rosy lips. Take a fig, a trimly bland, such as admiration wets. Be particular in this. Take a tender little hand, fringed with dainty fingerets. Press it, press it, in parenthesis. Oh, take all these, you lucky man. Take and keep them if you can, if you can. Take all these, you lucky man. Take and keep if you can, if you can. Take a pretty little coat, quite a miniature affair, hung about with trellised vine. Furnish it upon the spot with the treasures rich and rare I've endeavoured to define. Live to love and love to live, you may ripen at your ease, growing on the sunny side. Fate has nothing more to give, you're a dainty man to please. If you're not satisfied, not satisfied, oh, take my counsel, happy man, act upon it if you can, if you can, take my counsel, happy man, act upon it if you can, if you can. Take my counsel, happy 
No sooner has Marco finished his song than the ladies do indeed appear, having travelled across the sea, unable to remain separated from their loved ones any longer. They are full of questions about how the men have settled into their new roles, but before many of them can be answered, a celebratory banquet and dance is suggested and agreed. The resulting chorus is one of the score's happiest inspirations, Danza Kachuka is an infectiously jolly two minutes of choral and orchestral brilliance, and is probably the most likely of all the tunes in the opera to be the one you'll still be singing on your journey home. Elsewhere on our website you can access a specially recorded version of this chorus with members of the Gondoliers Chorus and the Orchestra of Scottish Opera. But since we don't have either chorus or orchestra here to demonstrate, my colleague and I will give you a flavour of the music. Passing thought about this piece, I realise that Barataria is probably a Spanish colony. It's mentioned in Cervantes' Don Quixote, by the way. But how do all these Venetians know how to dance cachucas, fandangos and boleros, all of which are Spanish dances, especially the bolero, which, if we really are in 1750, as Gilbert tells us, hasn't been invented yet? Never mind, it's a very good number. But back to the plot. Don Alhambra arrives and is appalled at the Republican reforms that Marco and Giuseppe have introduced to the court. He tells them about a previous similar experiment in a song, the purpose of which is to try to make the two gondoliers see sense. And the music is indeed very sensible and forthright. In fact, for a song sung by a Spanish grandee, it sounds remarkably English. Then 
that King Older no one denies his heart was of abnormal size, yet he'd have acted otherwise if he had been acuter. The end is easily foretold when every blessed thing you hold is made of silver or of gold. You long for simple pewter when you have nothing else to wear but cloth of gold and satin's rare. For cloth of gold you cease to care. Up goes the price of shoddy. In a short, whoever you may be, to this conclusion you'll agree when everyone is somebody. Then no one's anybody. That line in the last verse about up goes the price of shoddy originally had a quote from Yankee Doodle in the accompaniment, which was seen as expressing Sullivan's view of the many pirated productions of these operas which appeared in America. But Sullivan himself removed the quote, worrying that he might have gone too far. And he also, at the time, had an American lady friend who may have had something to say about this. So it doesn't appear in the published score, although it's still found in some sets of orchestral parts. The main reason Don Alhambra has come to Barataria is to announce the imminent arrival of the Duke and Duchess of Plaza Toro with their daughter Casilda, who of course is the rightful queen, and as such the lawful wife of whichever of the gondoliers turns out to be king. This news of unintentional bigamy doesn't go down very well with Janetta and Tessa, who have now appeared. They ask, and it's actually a very good question, why Don Alhambra didn't explain that part of the situation to them three months ago in Venice before insisting that the men had to leave immediately to go to Barataria, and they're only partly assuaged when he replies that if he had done so, the men would never have agreed to leave two such attractive young ladies. However, a solution is at hand because the elderly nurse to whom the baby boys were entrusted has been located and is currently waiting in the torture chamber to be interviewed by Don Alhambra. She will know beyond any doubt which is the true king. After he leaves, the two couples try to sort things out, and this is the cue for perhaps the cleverest piece of music in the score, the quartet in a contemplative fashion, which consists of a calm theme repeated several times in the background while each character gets more and more worked up trying to work out a solution to the problem. I don't 
A fanfare and march led by the Gents' Chorus heralds the promised arrival of the Plaza Toros, now magnificently attired. Casilda is worried that she may not be able to love her new husband, but the Duchess explains that it's possible to love almost anyone if you put your mind to it. Her song is a rare example of a patter song given to a female character. and Giuseppe return, the Duke gives them a lesson in royal etiquette, teaching them to dance a gavotte. This scene seems to have been included simply because the original Duke and the Giuseppe were particularly good dancers, but it gave Sullivan the chance to compose a stylish period piece with a winsome melody which became another of the score's hit tunes. At the end of the gavotte, the Duke and Duchess retire, leaving the two gondoliers alone with Casilda. She explains to them that, unaware that she'd been married in infancy, she is actually in love with somebody else, which, of course, is exactly the same situation that the gondoliers are in. Their two wives now appear, and the five of them try once again to get their collective heads around this state of affairs. But before they can come to any definite conclusion, the whole court reassembles as Don Alhambra brings on Inez, the elderly nurse I mentioned before. She has the distinction of being the Gilbert and Sullivan character who is on stage for the shortest time, but she's vitally important to the plot. She explains that in order to trick the traitors who came to steal the royal baby away from her, she kept the real prince and gave them her own son instead. The rightful king is therefore neither Marco nor Giuseppe, but Luis, who now appears to claim Casilda's hand and assume the throne of Barataria. Casilda is delighted that she can rule Barataria with the man she always loved, and the fortunes of her parents are therefore assured. 
Janetta and Tessa, though disappointed that neither of them will be a queen, can return to Venice with Marco and Giuseppe, who are now free to go back to their gondoliering and their republican views, so everyone lives happily ever after and joins in a final cachuca as the curtain falls. <laughs> In a rare moment of mutual admiration, both Gilbert and Sullivan wrote congratulatory letters to one another after the first performance of the gondoliers. Both felt that in spite of the rancorous atmosphere of its origins, it was among their best work together. Listening to it now after more than 120 years, during which its popularity has seldom waned, it's hard to disagree. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of the music in the gondoliers and I'd like to end by thanking again our four indefatigable singers Ellie Lahn, Sean Gwen Davis, William Morgan and Ben McAteer. I hope it won't be too long before we can welcome you to a full performance of this wonderful piece. Until then, take care and thanks very much for listening. <laughs>